I don't know if you saw, but I'm interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk. No way. Yeah, dude, I landed on no that. No way. I fly in the 20, uh, well, I'm flying in a couple days before, but on the 29th of October, I'm uh, going to be at his offices interviewing him in person. This girl that I interviewed, she tweeted at him after I interviewed her and was just like, hey, would you make this guy's day and, and be on his podcast? It's only five minutes. And he must have just been on his phone because he was, and he was just like, fine. And then he tagged his assistant and then we scheduled it. So I got 10 minutes with him. Dude, I'll be there soon. So Tyler, the first question I'd like to ask my guests is how do you spend your time here on planet Earth? Uh, I spend my time, uh, a combination of two things I'd say is having as much fun as possible while also delivering value to as many people as possible. So trying to help them also have as much fun because we only have a limited time here. So I think you got to make the whole 24 hours fun, even the sleep. Dreams got to be fun too, man. All of yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. So Tyler, in our last conversation, you talked about this, this notion that I've just become obsessed with and it's getting back to more of yourself when you were a kid. Talk to me a little bit about like how you formulated that, like where you got that from and like what kind of meaning it's given to you in your life. Yeah, it's interesting. So it's like, I, so, okay, I think, and this happens to like everybody, like we all, n nobody's like life path is just like straight up, you know? So I, right when I dropped out of college and, and we will probably dive into that story more later, but right when I dropped out of college, I went through like kind of a rough patch of like trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I was like, well, people take me seriously if I'm actually myself. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really doing too well because I was trying to put on a persona of like the suit and tie, which is just not me. So what was funny is then after that, once I started to be more of myself, then I started to, then I came out with a book and then I was able to grow a business and help others with that. And the reason, the thing that I figured out is I was myself when I was like five. That's what was like funny because so when I was five, I was just this outgoing like kind of like bubbly, if you will, for lack of a better term, dude, that was just like friends with everybody, always trying to connect people and like have a good time. And I realized I was like, oh, I'm becoming myself again. Like, and, but I had to like, I don't want to say fake it, but I had to like not become myself to realize myself. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what it was. I didn't know what you're speaking of. Dude, I love that on so many levels, man. So let's just let's just keep on digging deeper. Like what times were you not were you not yourself? Well, uh, yeah, so I'd say college for sure. So like college was when like middle school, high school, tons of fun, you know, like myself for sure. Not necessarily delivering value to the world, <laughs> but like having fun. And then college, I was like, all right, now I got to take this thing seriously. So then I joined um, like two fraternities, which I'm grateful I joined. I met a lot of good people. But one of them was actually a business fraternity where every Tuesday for the whole day, we actually had to wear a suit. And this is in Columbia, South Carolina. So, dude, it was hot. Like the whole thing didn't make sense to me regardless. <laughs> like I was like, this is sucks, this part. So, but um. But yeah, and like doing that and just feeling like not myself uh, on those days mm. and like – and my major was accounting. So I was like mm. chasing the money. Like I was like I'll be an accountant major because I looked at the, at the statistics. Accountants uh, make the most out of school, out of business schools I think mm. it was. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll do that. And dude, I couldn't even pass like the first accounting class. Like it was bad, <laughs> man. I couldn't even balance the things, dude. Like they're, it's hard. So – yeah, that was definitely a time when I wasn't myself. And then directly after I dropped out, I think I still, because I was scared, I still a little bit wasn't mm -hmm. myself. And then once I just let go, and was like, all right, I have a support system. I do have very good parents. So if I really fail at being myself, I'll end up back at my parents and I can relive my high school days, hmm. which won't be so bad, but it will be like that. <laughs> so that's once I let go of like the armor, and just went out and started to be on the offense instead of the defense, then things really started. Mm. Dude, offense over defense, man. That's the biggest life change is when you start actually getting out there and tackling and making shit happen. And it's just like you start to see these results that kind of like what you said, like 
the potential for that was maybe always there, but you just had to find that. So yeah. what, what year did you end up dropping out of college? And like, how did you make that decision? Like, was it a tough one? Oh, it was very hard. Yeah. So what I did is this, is I, I second year, so sophomore, sophomore mm -hmm. year, I finished two years. Then I studied abroad um, and I failed all my classes <laughs> and because I just wanted to travel. So I went like 15 countries right. in Europe, did Africa and just went all over the place and failed all my finals. Cause just for anybody listening, I don't know if you know this, like the, the colleges in Europe are way different than the States. And the one I went to the final was a hundred percent of your grade. So in the States though, you get like participation, like, you know, yeah. credits. So if you just show up, you can kind of do pretty good. In Europe, dude, at least the school I went to was like, dude, this essay is all you. Like, if you mess them up, so I messed all of them up, failed. And then I read the four hour work week, and that's when it really like solidified for me. I was like, okay, I don't feel like I need a diploma for what I want to do. And the four hour work week just gave me the mindset and the actual like systems and tools. The four hour work week was so foundational for so many different people. Like, it really just sparked something. Uh, for me, the foundational book was um, Four Hour Chef, believe it or not, not Four Hour Work Week. That's awesome. It was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, you, so you're failing left and right from these things. How did you then, like, were you, were you already starting a side hustle? Were you thinking about it? Like, what, what was going on in terms of, like, the business, like, providing value side of that? Yeah, yeah. So, well, how it all kind of started is so once I stepped out of school, I was like, I need another form of like growth and education. So, what I started to do, and this is actually because I heard somebody at a talk say that they did this. Um, this guy, Andy Dursch, uh, was speaking um, at this small little uh, local like event. And he said that when he was in college, he used to reach out to conference coordinators and asked them if he could um, basically help them set up the events in exchange for him coming. So then I tried that, dude. And first one was a huge hit and it worked. Um, and like Tim Ferriss was a keynote speaker at it. And I reached out to the coordinator of the event. I was like, hey, I'm this broke, like dropout, like college kid with like less than zero dollars. Like I'm in debt. <laughs> like can I help you with anything in exchange for letting me come to this event? I think the ticket was like five grand and I didn't have that. So he got back to me immediately. He was like, yeah, let's hop on Skype and see if we can work something out. And then we worked it out, became good friends. And then I helped him put on the first event. And he like flew me out to have me uh, to, to go to the event. And so I started to do that more and more too. So I was going to all these events, meeting a ton of people. And that's where I was getting my like, knowledge, if you will, which was good because these were actually seasoned entrepreneurs, not like professors. And I don't mean to put down professors, but if you want to go entrepreneurship, a college professor may not be the best person to teach you. Yeah. Um, but I knew like I'm very like outgoing extrovert. So I was like, I want to do public speaking. That's where my mind was at. But I was like, who's going to take a 20 year old that's, you know, no money seriously. Like what value does he have? And then a bunch of people were like, you should write a book because root word of authority is author. Once you write a book, then you can basically like brand yourself in whatever topic. And the interesting thing about a book is like you, if you're not an expert on something, you the process of writing a book on a topic in in a sense makes you an expert if you take it seriously so i wrote a book on how to network at conferences because i had been doing it and then i like took all my thoughts all my like experience put it in a book it ended up doing well and then instead of public speaking taking off what actually took off is me helping others do books and that's uh yeah, yeah that's the story <laughs> damn that's awesome, man. Yeah. And I, I, man, I, I love that so much. Cause it's like, you know, you were, you were in a place where you just, you were honest and you were like, yo, I'm in this spot. Like, can this happen? And, you know, I'm sure if, you know, the first guy said, no, I'm sure you would have gone on to, to the next guy. Um, but let me ask you something. Do you feel that, um, like dropping dropping out of college do you feel like 
it's something that actually requires like a significant amount of work and amount of um, like self-directed independence that you need to say, hey, I'm not going to go on path A, but I'm going to create my own path. Yeah, I will say that I think, and we don't know what's going to happen, but I, I do think that it's getting easier and easier to do your own thing with all the tools that we now have. But the decision was extremely difficult. And I do think that it's probably not best for everyone to, well, definitely not best to like be the leader, like number one, like as Gary V says all the time, like right. not everyone's a number one and like number 20 at Facebook did better than like 99% of all like number ones that are running small businesses. So I do think that some people it's just not right for them to like spearhead their own business because there's it, it, it's just I mean dude you're you're the end of it all so like it's hard yeah um so, so yeah I'd say it's not best for everyone but as far as like freelance goes like so it's maybe not running it, your whole company but it's doing like consulting and freelance I think anybody with the tools online I mean dude anybody could do that and it's it's not as daunting as it was five ten years ago to to do yeah. it. Yeah. Well said, my friend. So you end up writing this book. Talk to me a little bit. Talk to me a little bit about that. Like I was taking a look at your Amazon page and dude, you're just like a, a prolific beast, man. Like <laughs> what, what was the process like for the first book? And, and, and did you have the, the meaning of, okay, author means authority and that's why I'm going to write this book? Or was this kind of a thought that just came, you know, looking, connecting backwards? So for me, the, the true reason I wanted to write is because I wanted to like speak on stage on, on this topic because I knew nice. I was like, I just growing up, man, again, it's like becoming yourself again. Like when I'm by myself, like, so writing a book was the hardest thing like I ever did. Besides accounting homework, like that was hard. Um, but you put me in front of a bunch of people and tell me like, you know, create long lasting, like meaningful relationships and like connect with all these people. That to me, like my mind is silent. Like it's not even a thought, like it's just natural. So I wrote that book because I was like, this will allow conference coordinators to take me seriously to then book me to speak at their events, which then I'll meet a lot more people and be able to create more relationships so that is why I, um, yeah, that, that's really the reason I wrote it. And the process was hard, man. And, I, and I'll say, like, I would recommend anybody that is going to write a book, definitely remember that an editor can change the entire outlook of your book. So just finish the rough draft. Don't worry about, like, perfecting anything. Just get the rough draft done and then work with a good editor and you'll be, like, astonished at what will happen with your book. It's crazy. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's um, that's such an interesting topic, man. And you know, I really maybe this is a stupid thought, but you know, I really just <laughs> thinking about like a couple years ago, <laughs> like a couple years ago, man. Like the people that are thought leaders, the people that are authorities in this field, like it's not even necessarily that they know more than everyone, even though like that's the ideal scenario. But it's like they're just better at marketing and communicating with the world with potentially what they could do. And that's so genius because then that gives you the white space to really be able to do whatever you want, whether it's write a book, go on stage with, you know, maybe even Tim Ferriss one day like this yeah. and that it's crazy. Well, what, sh what that shows you is that so, and it's like, it's good and it's maybe not good, but it's just the right. got to accept like, what the world is right and like messaging is very important like like brand messaging like sales cut like all that stuff unfortunately because like if it was if, if i had to pick maybe i would think like i don't want it to be that way and it just be like the person that provides the most value is at the highest let's say whatever that means but like unfortunately it's not that way like messaging is very important so learning those um learning that trade of how to position yourself and message allows you to create more impact. So it's important to know how to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. So you wrote this book. Um, you know, you said you started to help out some people. Um, talk to me a little bit about the creation of, 
you know, what is now your business authors unite? How did that start? Was this, you know, just started picking up a couple clients here and there? Was it, yo, I'm going to start this big, you know, thing in the publishing industry? What, what was the origin story of that? Yeah. So it started about five years ago. And I'll say when it did start, Facebook organic was way better than it is now. <laughs> if there is even or, an organic Facebook anymore. Uh, yeah. So like, I had dropped out, right? And I come from a pretty small town, like an hour north of Philadelphia. And when I launched this book and it hit bestseller on Amazon and it was doing really well, people were like, in my town, were like, what is going on? Like, this kid just dropped out of school and now he's like this author. Like, this is weird. So, like, it, it did kind of spread pretty quickly. Um, you know, just in that kind of realm and like my online connection. So as it spread, I got, I'll say flooded. I probably got like a few hundred messages. I, I'd say it would be fair uh, being like, dude, how did you do this? I want to write a book. I don't even know how to start. I don't know how to finish it. And, I, and like good friends, I helped them for, uh, for free. And then I mm. kind of as like a test and they got the same results as me. So, you know, I, I showed them the process I used. They were able to finish it, showed them how to publish it. They published, showed them how to market it, and they did it. And same, similar results. So then they gave me testimonials. And then what I did is I created, you know, pa uh, packages or services around it. Um, and, yeah, now five years later, we're over 300 uh, people that we've helped with it. So it's it's been a journey, man. It's been fun. That's awesome, dude. So – you know, going back to why you wrote your first book in the first place, for somebody that wants to get out there and let's say they also want to start speaking, they want to start talking about this thing, is the best way to do it, in your opinion, to write like a single topic book about this specific thing? And then, you know, whatever the process is, conference coordinators reach out to you, you reach out to them, you hire an agency, whatever it is. Or, is it like, yo, I'm going to write this big fat book as a first time writer and it's just going to be filled with like a bunch of different things and it's going to go really in depth? Uh, I'd say the first one for sure. Like the thing is you can always write more books and I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is like mm. it's very simple. So it's not that they don't realize but it's hard to like even think about writing a second book when you're not done your first one. But what stops people from finishing their first is they don't want to leave anything out. But it's like, dude, you can do an updated version. You can write a whole other book. So it depends on your goal. If your goal is to become a public speaker, pick you know a direct niche, write like a 70 to 125 page book, like a little bit shorter, a little thinner of a book, and just provide as much value as possible to your target customer and, and then just put it out into the world. You know, and then from there, as far as the public speaking goes, um, one of my good friends, he actually helps people like do that. And he would be way more qualified for this because I've I've spoken like maybe a few dozen times. Like I, it's funny because Authors Unite took off quicker than my speaking career. So yeah. that's I'm still trying to like grow that. But from my experience is I spoke at an event. It went well. And then they kind of started to talk to each other. And then another one booked me, you know, and it kind of snowballs. But definitely at first, you want to be reaching out to coordinators as much as possible. And it's a numbers game. Just like, you know, I reached out to the conference coordinators to help out. If you reach out to a thousand, dude, like the chance of you not getting one is like so low. <laughs> like, so just, yeah, yeah, reach out to a thousand and you'll get a gig. <laughs> like it's going to happen. Last month, I had my first kind of speaking gig and the next day I had two other event organizers just reach out to me. No. Um, so, I mean, I, yeah. What was your first gig? How did you, how did you get that in terms of your speaking? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say my first, like, you know, cause there's a lot of different ones. Like I've had like smaller ones, which they're all like gigs, but I mean like smaller, like local events that are maybe like 20, 30 people. My mm -hmm. first like big one was in Austin, Texas and I got actually lucky. So this one uh, other guy who does book publishing was supposed to speak. And then for some reason he couldn't go. And then he recommended me to go to this event in Austin, Texas. Uh, what was it? Next Gen Summit or something, I think it's called. Mm. Next Gen Summit. So there's like 300 people there, I believe, around that number. And I opened up the event. So I was the first uh, talk. It was about 30 minutes. And 
Dude, it was good, man. Like I, this was my first time and it went well. Like it got emotional. Like it was good. Dude. It was, um, and then, yeah, after that, there was some, some other people there that uh, also held events and I got a few other ones um, from, from that one. So that was my first, as I would say, like real official, you know, like big stage, mm-hmm. they got pictures, they got video, you know, that was the first real one for me. I love it, man. I always, I always love asking people's like, you know, what was your first client? What was your first speaking? What was your, I, I love these kinds of stories, man. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, so Tyler, to to sort of switch gears here, whenever whenever I email you, I automatically get a uh, an auto responder, <laughs> and it says, "Yo, what's up, man? Thanks for reaching out. I'm I'm busy working on on Authors Unite. Yeah. What?" what is the methodology maybe behind putting that email reminder up and maybe carving out time to remain focused? Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you this. I actually just turned that off because that's like a vacation settings thing. But the reason I I put it up and I may put up another one um, is because I do a podcast of my own and I do like 40, like 40 of them a week. So like, Today I have like 26 after this call, 26 podcasts. Like, like it's crazy, but I love connecting with people, dude. I know it's crazy, but I love it. So like my thing was like I was struggling to get back to people within a 48-hour time frame, even with an assistant. Like your assistant can only answer so many things and then they have to push it back to you. So it was taking me like three, four days to respond to people sometimes. And I was like, dude, that's not like really professional. And it's not good. So I put that autoresponder up. I was just like, listen, I'm working. I'm trying. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, so that's really the reason I did it. And then I was like, why not throw in authorsunite.com? I mean, that can only help, you know? <laughs> yeah. Tyler, I first found out about you from your podcast. I went on as a guest. You did a great job. I thought it was a very interesting uh, format. And, you know, the more I learned about you, the more intrigued I got. And, um, you know, you're, you're crushing it on the podcast game. I remember, I think I saw on your Instagram story, maybe like a month ago that you crossed a hundred thousand downloads. Congratulations, man. And I know this is, uh, this is just the beginning, man, but from a fellow podcaster, like podcasting has fundamentally changed my life. Like in terms of, you know, the influence, like the authority, all that stuff, like all that stuff's great. And the different things that have come from that and different opportunities is just mind blowing. But like the art itself of just like sitting down with somebody, I know your podcast is in short form, but the art of sitting down with somebody in, you know, in a way where you guys aren't distracted, you guys aren't interrupted. We may not even know each other before we hop on this call. And then to just have like a very, great conversation and to put that out there on our podcast or your podcast is honestly one of the most enjoyable things that I love doing here on planet earth, man. So what, what's the podcasting journey been for you? Like, dude, it's been unbelievable. Like it has, I can't even describe it. Like it is. So first off it is like, and like we kind of started this out with like just having fun. So for me, the podcast is the most enjoyable part of like my business and it even if it was not indirectly like growing my business i would still do it and that's why i do it so much because i realized after doing like 100 episodes that like i could be 80 years old and i could still be doing this and loving it so like that to me is like okay i should probably keep pursuing that if i know i could be happy doing it when i'm 80. Cause I got a long time till I hit that number. So like, let's do yeah. it. So a lot of episodes. It, yeah. Right. <laughs> but, um, so dude, like it grows your, your network. So I'm building a community now of everybody I interview. So to provide value to them, to each other, just trying to create like a support network and then it gets them in front of people. So, you know, it is short form. It's different than a lot of other podcasts. And from, the people in the audience, I'm start like people are saying online. I've been noticing that like they're addicted to the podcast because it's like there's so much like new interesting nuggets and it's in five minute increments. So like you can bang out like ten of them on your way to work and you'll learn like ten new things. So it's fun. So it works in that way. And then for me, I end up getting some clients from it just kind of like naturally. 
because, you know, uh, I help people with books. A lot of people in the business world want to become an author. So create the relationship with them, get them in front of a new audience. And then, you know, they're in the network, provide value, value, value. And then mm. you know, down the road a month later, they're like, yo, dude, like I've been wanting to write this book. I know that you do that. We're friends now. Let's do it. So it's a win, 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 win. You know, <laughs> like it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Yeah, there's so many different forms of podcasts out there. And a lot of people ask me like, yo, should I start like a five, 10 minute podcast? Should I start a 30, 45 minute podcast, which is what this one is? Or, and then I'm like, you know what, man? Like there are so many other podcasters out there that have five minute podcasts and they're successful. There's people like, you know, Joe Rogan that do two and a half hours and they're successful. So you really just got to match it like on your own style, your own kind of ambition. And it seems like you've kind of done that in terms of maybe I don't want to say like podcast skill, but like just what are some things that you've learned to do what not to do being like a podcast host? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, first thing I'd say is like I use a tool called Anchor. So like I would say like just for anybody that wants to do a podcast, just check out anchor.fm because the yeah. reason what not to do, right? And and I'll get into after, but like I put off doing a podcast for years because it just seems so complex. And I was like, I don't want to deal with like editing audio and all this stuff. Like it was just like too complex for me. Like I was like, I don't want that. And then Anchor came out and made it so easy. So I would say don't overthink it. There is a tool out there now that makes it extremely simple. Um, and I would say too, what have I learned from doing it? Um, I would say like think Pat, like think of all the ways that you can provide value to the person you're interviewing and, and not just yeah. think of it like there's two people you should be thinking about, audience and the person you're interviewing. And I think a lot of podcasters only think about the audience. Whereas I actually came from a place of thinking about the interviewee before the audience, and then I thought about the audience as well. So the interviewee, like, is so important. You know, like that's a potential like real relationship that you guys can can have. So I would just be like, whatever they need, you know, podcast image, like create them social media stuff, like do whatever they need to help them promote themselves. And in turn, that also helps you. So I'd say really focus in on providing value to them. Dude, that was such a big lesson that I only really learned recently. And, you know, like, so I would get on these people on the podcast and, you know, the high profile people would sometimes, um, I'd be more intimidated by them, right? Like if I have like Seth Godin or David Meltzer on the podcast, but what I would do is I do the interview and then I just cut it. Right. It'd be like this sort of transactional um, relationship. And obviously some people are like really busy and they've got a lot of shit to do and and this and that. But the moment when I actually started doing and understanding what you just said is the game changer in my entire podcast. Like I started really thinking about these people like my friends and I started helping them in whatever ways, whether that was like an email or a social media thing or some uh, something that I saw that I think that could help them or this and that, that's really the moment that my entire podcast changed, man. And it's really become like this like inner circle within other circles and circles. And it just kind of goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, funny side story. I was at a uh, hyper growth drift in Boston and uh, I was just going to grab some chips um, next to the convenient thing. And I just saw this guy just like standing there. And I just like stood next to him and I started talking to him. We like he asked me, what do I do? I'm like, yeah, I, I host a podcast. And he was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I've got this other friend that hosts a podcast. His name is uh, <laughs> Tyler Wagner. And it's just like it, it's circle after circle. It's it's so funny, man, how, you know, we're all kind of connected. And I think the podcasting really helps bring that out. Oh, it does, man. That that was awesome. I know because you guys sent me a, uh, a picture and I was like, yes, dude. <laughs> uh, but dude, that's how it goes, man. It, it really is. It's an amazing tool. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, man. So Tyler, I, you know, one thing, one thing I want to touch on is just like a little bit more of the, the personal side for you. Like I remember we talked about this in our 
uh, last interview. But you know, you told me some things like, um, you know, you you don't drink coffee. You take um, qu- what is it, qualia? Yeah, qualia. Um, wh- yeah. What what is like you know your own in a very very broad and uh, an ambiguous question? What are like some of the personal things that you've learned that help you get to more of yourself? If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So I will say this, just in case anybody saw this. My uh, friend is actually here, and he brought me a coffee. So I am drinking a oh, coffee. This morning. <laughs> um, but typically, I don't drink coffee. I use um, a supplement called Qualia, and it really helps like focus. It has I don't know, a bunch of different like natural uh, ingredients in it. Mm-hmm. But um, first thing for me is a walk in the morning. So I live down in Miami, so it's for me like nature and like warm weather is important. Grew up in Philly, and I realized quickly that I was happy for half the year, and I was miserable for the other half, and that was due to weather. <laughs> so, it like, yeah, seasonal depression is a real thing, man. So, yeah, it is. now that I live in a place where it's warm all year round, I go for walks that are like an hour and a half, two hours every morning, and mm-hmm. it's interesting where it just like calms my entire body. Any like problems I'm having like seem to solve themselves almost like the answer just like comes to me when I'm on a walk and then like audio books and all that like the walk is the key really. Then I get back um, and I will take qualia which really helps with like focus. I'd say that's kind of my second thing and then third I'd say dude is just like nutrition. So my um, I have a health coach and he got me on uh, the keto diet and I don't follow it like religiously. But I follow it enough where I've noticed a huge difference with like really lowering my sugar intake. I don't do like zero sugar, but I do like very, very low. And just following that, dude, like good nutrition, a walk every morning, and then you don't even really need the qualia, but like it helps a lot, I'll say. <laughs> like it's, it helps a lot. Um, this is not like an ad for it. I'm just saying it helps. <laughs> uh, so those three things, dude, you will get a lot of work done. Let's say that. <laughs> No, man, I I love that so much. And um, like having a bunch of people on that really dive into the science, like uh, Stephen Kotler about flow states and what happens when you do go for like an hour, a couple hour walk, you know, you're, it, it really is crazy, man. Like I do the same thing and it's, it's so much more productive than just like trying to sit down and like trying to solve these problems that I'm having or whatever. Um, and like, you know, what I've even done is, you know, I found that walking outside is a really big part just cause I'm like, I'm a human too. So like there are times like in the middle of the day where I'll schedule a bunch of different calls that I can do just on my phone. Like I don't need to be looking at my computer or anything and I'll just go outside for a walk and it just makes things flow so much better. And like, really, if you just go back to basics and like, just kind of think about it. Like, I'm not trying to say this to like bring quality down or whatever. I've never taken it, but I I'm considering on taking it, but it's like, dude, if you just stick to the fundamentals, like walking, exercising, getting in good nutrition, whether that's keto or, you know, whatever you find right for your body and sleeping well, yeah, sleeping, sleeping well is super, super important, man. I've just really understood the importance of that in like the last two years, especially from like a, um, kind of like that, that like, go, 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 go entrepreneur mindset of like, yo, you only got to sleep like five hours. And for me, that's not the case at all. Um, but like really doing those things. (laughs) I like six hours, six hours (laughs) under six. I'm a little drug. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I do. I try to shoot for like eight, sometimes even eight and a half. Like I love sleeping, man. And it's like, it's like the ultimate like coffee. Like you don't even need coffee if you've got that deep rest, man. So Tyler, where can people connect with you if they want to learn more? Like we'll, we'll have authorsunite.com. We'll have your website. We'll have all the social medias linked below. But is there any like specific network you're the most active on? And is there anything specific that you want people to check out? Yeah, you know, actually... Like I said, so I'm I'm growing like the business blast like community. So let's throw that in, in the in the show notes below. Oh, and, yeah. and people want to join that and meet um, you know, a lot of people that I've interviewed. Um, that can be cool too. I'm very like 
I'm very keen on growing that as a very supportive community. So anybody that wants to dive in there, that that's probably the best place. Oh yeah. I don't even know how I didn't mention that. Yeah. Definitely go listen to the business blast right now. Um, fantastic podcast. I sometimes listen to it and it's like, just like you said, it's good for just like, you know, get in, get out. You got those nuggets and you're out. It's awesome, man. Tyler, the final thing that I like to do on here is I like to request that my guest leaves the audience with a self inquisitive question, a question that they can can kind of just ask themselves throughout the day. And, you know, in my case, I found that it can be very powerful. So I'd love it if you could ask some sort of a self inquisitive question. Yeah, I the question I think everyone should ask themselves is like, how can you create something that you enjoy that also provides value to others? And then, you know, and you know, money's important. We all need to, to make money. So the value that you provide to others should also be profitable for you in some way. But like, just think about that because I think the way we're brought up is to do something we don't like in return to use that money to get things we do like. So mm. I would ask you to question like, how do you make the whole day something you like and make that work for you? Because you'll be able to provide a lot more value to this world if you're enjoying all of it and not just whatever, 6 p.m. till 10 p.m., you know? So I would ask yourself that. Yeah, man. That's such a powerful question. Tyler, thanks so much for coming on, my friend. Really glad we can make this happen. I don't want to leave it on any stronger note than that. Thank you to everyone out there for listening. This has been your host, Mark Metry. Damn, you made it till the end of the podcast. That's really rare in the age of digital distraction. This really means the world to me. I really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to hop on over to my website, Mark Metry or message me on social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. My name is Mark Metry, M-A-R-K-M-E-T-R-Y. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you learned in this episode and I'll be sure to get in touch with you. And if you really, really love the podcast, I'd highly appreciate it if you went on iTunes right now and left me a review. It helps way more than you know. Let's get this Humans 2.0 grassroots movement going. Woo! Get out there and do something impactful today.